the earth shall bow down before you, O God, and shall sing to you, shall sing to your name, O Most High. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace and peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. You are very welcome to Mass today on the second Sunday of Ordinary Time in Year B. So, to prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries, let us call to mind our sins. Lord Jesus, you came to reconcile us to one another and to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You heal the wounds of sin and division. Christ, have mercy. You bring light to those in darkness. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty ever-living God, who govern all things, both in heaven and on earth, mercifully hear the pleading of your people, and bestow your peace on our times. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Samuel. Samuel was lying in the sanctuary of the Lord where the ark of God was when the Lord called Samuel Samuel he answered here I am then he ran to Eli and said here I am since you called me Eli said I did not call go back and lie down so he went and lay down once again the Lord called Samuel 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 got up and went to Eli and said here I am since you called me he replied, I did not call you, my son. Go back and lie down. Samuel had as yet no knowledge of the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not been revealed to him. Once again, the Lord called the third time. He got up and went Eli and said, Here I am since you called me. Eli then understood that it was the Lord who was calling the boy. And he said to Samuel, Go and lie down, and if someone calls, say, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. The Lord then came and stood by, calling as he had done before, Samuel, Samuel. Samuel answered, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Samuel grew up, and the Lord was with him, and he let no word of his fall to the ground. The word of the Lord. Here I am, Lord, I come to do your will. I waited, I waited for the Lord, and he stooped down to me. He heard my cry. He put a new song into my mouth, praise of our God. You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear. You do not ask for holocaust and victim. Instead, here am I. 
In the scroll of the book it stands written that I should do your will. My God, I delight in your law in the depth of my heart. Your justice I have proclaimed in the great assembly. My lips I have not sealed. You know it, O Lord. Here I am, Lord. I come to do your will. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. The body is not meant for fornication. It is for the Lord and the Lord for the body. God, who raised the Lord from the dead, will by his power raise us up too. You know surely that your bodies are members making up the body of Christ, and anyone who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. Keep away from fornication. All the other sins are committed outside the body, but to fornicate is to sin against your own body. Your body, you know, is the temple of the Holy Spirit, who is in you since you received him from God. You are not your own property. You have been bought and paid for. That is why you should use your body for the glory of God. The word of the Lord. Alleluia, alleluia. Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the message of eternal life. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. As John stood with two of his disciples, Jesus passed, and John stared hard at him and said, Look, there is the Lamb of God. Hearing this, the two disciples followed Jesus. Jesus turned round, saw them following, and said, What do you want? They answered, Rabbi, which means teacher. Where do you live? Come and see, he replied. And they went and saw where he lived and stayed with him the rest of that day. It was about the tenth hour. One of these two who became followers of Jesus after hearing what John had said was Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter. Early next morning, Andrew met his brother and said to him, We have found the Messiah, which means the Christ. And he took Simon to Jesus. Jesus looked hard at him and said, you are Simon, son of John. You are to be called Kephas, meaning rock. The Gospel of the Lord. A few years ago, in one of his letters to the worldwide clergy, the late Holy Father said, Priests must not become so involved in the work of the Lord that they overlook the Lord of the work. Now, the spiritual life is as much about taking time out to be solely with the Lord in prayer as it is about such things as raising money for the poor, going on charity walks or sponsored silences, which of course are very good things in themselves, but not the complete picture. The present pandemic, with its emphasis on staying at home and being less active, may be pointing us in the right direction. A prayer life will involve drawing spiritual nourishment from the Word of God, followed by silent listening, so that we can get to know the Lord and his will for us in a one-to-one -one encounter. Remember the story of Mary and Martha. It was Mary, not the busy Martha, who chose the better part by sitting at the Lord's feet and listening to his words. Even Jesus himself had to listen to the word of his Father. He said on one occasion, my teaching is not my own, but the teaching of the one who sent me. He would have listened to that teaching when alone with his father in prayer, something he did quite often. The first reading from Samuel also brings out this same point. Eli, when he eventually realized that it was the Lord who was calling the young Samuel, told him to answer with the words, Speak, Lord, your servant is listening. Not listen, Lord, 
your servant is speaking. There is, of course, a time for speaking, but without listening, the focus will be too much on us and not on the Lord. Blessed Mother Teresa, she always insisted that our, our nuns, <coughs> excuse me, our nuns spent an hour in prayer before the Blessed Sacrament, before they would go and visit the poorest of the poor, she called them, in Calcutta. Otherwise, they might just end up doing a job and not see the face of Christ in these needy people. Now the Gospel today is about the Lord calling the first disciples. However, before he did this in another part of the Gospel, he spent the whole previous night in prayer to God so that his choice would not be arbitrary but based on God's will. In the first reading, Samuel let no word of the Lord fall to the ground. Now, if the word of God proclaimed at Mass does not, figuratively speaking, drop from our head into our heart, then it may very well fall to the ground. Letting his words fall to the ground is akin, I would say, to carelessly letting drop the sacred host at Mass, something we wouldn't dream of doing. If we listen to the Lord, we will know what to do and when to do it. Today's psalm reads, You do not ask for sacrifice and offerings, but an open ear, which is followed by, Here I am, I'm coming to do your will. It suggests heartfelt listening to the word of God is a prelude to entrusting our whole selves into his hands, ensuring we only do what pleases him. God is our loving Father who cares for us and knows all our needs. With confidence we pray. Let us pray that this year sees an end to the pandemic and infuse us with new hope for the future. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for those people in our world who work tirelessly to uphold the value of human life from the cradle to the grave. May their labours bear much fruit. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for vocations to the priesthood for our diocese. May those who respond to his call persevere in the choice they have made. Lord, hear us. Let us pray that God's people may follow the word of God so that it can drop from our head into our heart to make it our own. May it become a living word manifested in our good deeds. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the sick, especially those who have fallen victim to the virus. May the new year bring them healing from its ill effects, whether physical or mental. Lord, hear us. We pray for our deceased relatives and friends, especially Muriel Berg and Hilda Hewitt, who died recently, and those whose anniversaries occur around this time. May they inherit life eternal. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for needs of our own. We now pray to Mary, who listened to the word of God and kept it. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. 
Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. God our Father, listen to our prayers today and grant us the things we ask for through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Lord God, we ask you to receive us and be pleased with the sacrifice we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquity, cleanse me from my sins. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of my hands with the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Grant us, O Lord, we pray, that we may participate worthily in these mysteries for whenever the memorial of this sacrifice is celebrated, the work of our redemption is accomplished through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in you we live and move and have our being. And while in this body we not only experience the daily effects of your care, but even now possess the pledge of life eternal. <laughs> for having received the first fruits of the Spirit through whom you raised up Jesus from the dead, we hope for an everlasting share in the Paschal mystery. And so with all the angels we praise you as in joyful celebration we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to the disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held as worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Ralph our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy and them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honour is yours forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence to Jesus in the prayer that he gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
we have come to know and to believe in the love that God has for us. Let us pray. Pour on us, O Lord, the spirit of your love, and in your kindness make those you have nourished by this one heavenly bread, one in mind and heart, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go now in the peace of Christ.